All right, everybody, welcome back to episode three of Let's Build an Airship. I am Ingram, one of the Minecrafters, and, well, basically we're working on building an airship. And somebody had a great idea that I actually really liked. Um, and we were going to look at making the ship from Serenity. It's actually technically the ship is Serenity um, from the Firefly series with Richard Castle, for those of you who watch Castle, which is awesome. Um the cool I mean it's a really cool ship and I really like it but I was doing out the math today and I don't think I don't think we'll be able to fit it cuz in order to do it to scale this would be the firefly engine right in the engine room um and in order to do everything to scale even if even if we only consider that the engine is technically 3 blocks high this is it's actually surprisingly um it mapped itself out really well and I was I was kind of surprised at that um, the the difficulty is the ship is 72 blocks long so it's really big and if we abbreviated it it might look might look a little weird um, but it was gonna be I was gonna have the the bay the hangar have the drill bit in it and then the drill bit would come down we could still do the um, do the doors for those who have any idea what about what I'm talking about um, but then you have like that neck that comes that comes way up and it's just gonna be it's gonna be really difficult to do and it's 72 blocks long each run and we have a thousand block or a thousand um, frame limit that we're working with so I didn't want to risk it um, it is an awesome idea and if somebody does that if somebody makes it after they watch this tutorial or if you already know how to do all this stuff they make it um, let us know post it on Facebook uh, and, and we'll We'll try and get pictures up there. Maybe come on and, and do like a little video of your of your ship in action. Um, if you can build one to scale, um, but I think in order to build it to scale, you got to modify the uh, the max allowance for um, your frames. And I don't think I don't think that's going to work. The other thing I don't like about our current design is I don't like these. And so we are going to change. I don't like those extra wings because they are taking up um, some of our valuable frame space. I'm also not going to do everything quite so symmetrically because again of that frame issue. Um, if you don't remember what the frame issue is, we have only um, a thousand frames that we can build everything with. So these are all technically connected. I'm gonna like kinda get an overhaul this whole this whole setup here. What I'm gonna do instead of this, see all this isn't really needed because technically this whole side is already wired in and it's wired down here. So we're gonna kinda duplicate this on this other side. Now we have an issue that the other side doesn't have. Let me get rid of like I'm really I'm gonna just kinda try and trim the fat on this as we go. Um but what we're gonna do I don't know how much I should trim the fat but what we'll do is again we're gonna use um, panels you do not have to use red wool I am just using it because oh I just had an idea be able to do that. I was going to what if we put if we put power. All right, well we don't actually need to do that. Let's just do that. That connects him in, that saves us this, a ton of um a ton of frames. We probably just nixed maybe, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 frames off this off this ship. Okay, so I just found a nifty little tool that this thing apparently adds and what I want to do is gonna show you what what I was planning so this is gonna be the engine room then we're gonna have a like a boom extending out and it's gonna look it's gonna look better this is gonna be you know built up and then coming down from that is gonna be our mining platform and then built up over here hopefully not looking quite as ugly as this drawing is actually going to be our um, our cockpit well there we go 
So this is going to be the engine, obviously. And this is going to be the drill. <laughs> it's really awkward to, to write on this way, but and then maybe have some some wings coming out here. Um, it'll hopefully look a lot better than that particular drawing did. But anyway, um, all right. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to get I, I want to get this thing in the air and. We could technically do that manually, but it's probably a good a time as any. I want to get some computer craft stuff. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a computer. And I'm going to do this in a way that we will be able to later move it. Because it's definitely going to get moved. And if you don't know anything about computer craft, then, well, this will be fun. I'm going to get cyan because that's Minecrafter colors. And, you know what, I think I'm just going to slap it right here. As horrible as this may sound. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my drive, the floppy disk, right in there. Now we're all connected, we're all wired up. This computer is now connected to all of these uh, bundle cables. And let's get some computer craft going. What we're going to do is we're going to edit a program called startup and this will get run every time now there are better and worse ways to do this I'm going to try and code in this UI here but um, this is not the ideal way to code it's better to get a program like sublime text is a great program and actually let me see if I can let me see if I can show you how to set that up. What we're gonna do is go to your let's see, I'm doing this in Feed the Beast Ultimate, okay? You basically go to wherever your folder is and inside the saves and we are doing frame no air, no, it's actually frames for some odd reason. In here we're gonna use computer disk and one. And this is where our program is actually we're actually going to deal with programs on this, okay? Um, the reason, so basically, if you don't know anything about computer craft, um, each computer has an ID, which you can tell what the ID is. Um, if you do get, hang on, exit, just do ID. This is computer zero. It doesn't have an ID yet. Um, and actually, it might now. I don't know if they technically let you have computer zero no okay but then what we're gonna do is <clears throat> we're gonna edit a, f a file on this and we're gonna call it startup and startup is a, f is a program that will always get called okay whenever the computer the, like the little thing if it's whenever this starts up so if you leave the chunk and come back it's gonna run the startup program if you come on and if you hit control R to reboot the program it'll run the startup program all that stuff um, if we hit ls that is to list we can see that now there's two um, green things here those are directories those are folders and then startup this is white it's a program so what's gonna happen is let's say if we edit startup oops and let's do let's do a print command and we'll say print starting or start your engines and we'll close that out. See, it turns red to indicate that it's text. We'll hit Control, brings up the little menu. We'll hit Save, and then we'll tap or we'll arrow over and hit Exit. And now, if we hold Control and R, it's going to reboot the program. And see how it says Start Your Engines? It loaded up that startup program, and then the startup program told it to print out Start Your Engines, and so it did that. And now it's done because the startup program doesn't do anything else yet. And there we go. This thing is all set. Now this disk drive will actually hold just like a normal CD or hard drive or USB drive or whatever. This is like a USB drive. Um, if you notice, there's if you ls here, which is the, to list the directory, you can see that there's a disk directory. So if you ls disk, you see there's nothing in it. Okay. But if we were to say edit, instead of just edit startup, if we were to edit disk um, slash test and say blah, blah, save it, exit, LS, ls disk now we see that there's a test program in there and we can run that 
um, in our other program by calling disk test. And that actually we can do it like this. So if we said edit test, this is like a oh crap. Let's say if you hit the up arrow key, you can get back to your previous commands. We're gonna do print. I'm a disk foo. And then we will save that and exit that. And now if we call disk test. I'm a disk foo. There you go. It calls a program. All the program does right now is print that out. Okay. <clears throat> that is basic computer craft. We're about to get really real right here, right now. Um, so you'll notice that you can edit all these things in this in this window. Okay. But it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, there is support for if you're using an advanced monitor. There is support for color, and there is support for mouse clicking. But still, you don't want to code like 200 lines of stuff. We're not going to do 200 lines today, but you don't want to code anything serious in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of this and we're going to open up that folder again. And now we see two things in our computer folder. We see a disk or a folder called zero, which is computer ID zero. And there's that program that we made, um, the startup program. And then disk one, there's the test program that we made. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually, we're going to edit these, um, directly on here and the cool thing about disks okay is that you notice how we put a startup um, program in this computer itself but if we put a startup program on the disk then any computer that's attached to that disk will try and run that startup program so the reason that's cool is because if we were to destroy this we just destroyed that okay if we put another computer down and we say ID. This is ID number one. The other one was ID number zero. So if we go back into this folder, actually, if we say edit startup, you'll notice that our command isn't there anymore. And if we put new startup command, and now we go back into this folder, you'll see now there's two folders. This is our old computer, and this is our new computer, right? And the new computer has its own startup. If we open this, we're going to open this with sublime text here. And let me just get rid of this. Okay, that's the program that we just edited, but it's different from this other one. See, that's what that's what we had done before, but as soon as you break a computer, you lose everything that was on the computer. Um, not cool. So if you put everything on a disk, you can just take the disk out. And actually, if you break the disk drive, the disk will pop out anyway. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put everything on that floppy disk. Okay, so let's start. Let's say we'll break this one. We'll get a new one. I don't generally don't break these things. It, it tends to be a pain in the butt. Um, we're going to edit, start up. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to we're going to kind of leave this for a second. But what I want to do is I've created for you a monitor API. We're going to do a touch screen monitor, and we will do that. Um, I don't know if we're going to get there yet, but let's just let's just start out. What we're going to do is we're going to make a thing, and all it's going to do is you're going to be able to come in here. It's going to ask you for what direction you want to go in, and then it's going to ask you what um, or how many how many times you want to go in that direction, and then it's going to pulse these these cables here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our folder, our actual folder, with all of our computers. If you are not doing single player and you are doing a server and you are not the server owner, this is going to be a lot more difficult to do. Um, there is a way to do it. You can set up a symbolic link with Dropbox that is way outside the scope of this. But unfortunately to do that, you actually need to be friends with <laughs> the guy who runs the server. So, all right, we're going to make a new text document. We're going to name it Startup. And we're going to get rid of the end. It's going to say, oh, don't change the file name. No, we know what we're doing. Then we're going to say, open this with sublime text. We're going to get rid of these guys. Then we're going to say, view syntax, change the syntax to Lua. Okay. And now we go. We got all our colors and everything here. This is a comment. This is a comment. All right. And so now let's get some code done. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a function. And this thing is going to say, 
um, wait for command and it'll just wait and it's gonna say while true which will always be true while true is true do and then some stuff and then end and then we're gonna end our function okay and now we're gonna make a list of this is maybe not the, the easiest way to do it this is a little more advanced we're gonna make a table and that table is going to say um, we're going to put a bunch of commands in here and what we're going to do is we're going to say if somebody types up then the command that we're going to do is up and I'll show you why I'm doing that let's see down this is kind of rudimentary but it's going to teach you a couple different things all at once left equals left and right equals right and up down left right forward forward and backward equals backward okay so what we're going to do before we get into any two crazy things, we need to get, we're going to do local event. Um, let me just, we actually don't need to, let me see. We don't need actually events. I think we can do, we'll do print, oops, lowercase, uh, enter a direction. And then we will say uh, direction equals read, and then print, and that's going to read something that they type in. Enter a or how many times? How many times? It's not the cleanest code. But we'll say. Um, count equals read okay and now what we're gonna do is let's for starters just say um, moving and then we'll concatenate our direction and then we'll say uh, put a space and then do count and then times and you'll see what this is going to do. We're going to ignore this for a second, and we're going to run. We're going to um, we're going to run this guy. <clears throat> so what we need to do is we're going to call um, wait for command. So this is a function. It doesn't get called by automatically. It this it will just rip down through this file, set everything up, create a variable called commands, which we're not going to use yet. Create a function called wait for command. Um, set up an infinite loop and in that infinite loop it's going to wait for us to give it something to do now we need to just call that infinite loop command and we're going to say wait for command this is going to call the function that we just made up here okay so if we come back let me just save that if we just come back in here if we look and if we do ls ls disk I don't know why I keep saying that if we do edit startup disk slash startup we can see there's all the stuff that we typed. Okay, it's a lot easier to use that other program than to have to try and come in and type in this. You don't really, you only get a few lines, maybe 20 lines per screen. Okay, not ideal. So <clears throat> if we reboot this computer, it's going to tell us that we have an error at line six. It's expecting a curly bracket, and that is because these need uh, commas at the end. Let's reboot it again. It'll call that startup command. Enter direction. Up. How many times? Ten. Moving up ten times. Woohoo. And then it's going to ask us again. This is basically what we're going to have it do. And after it gets our input, we're going to have it actually move in. Okay, so let's come back into our program here. We're going to make it actually move our spaceship. 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of, actually, we'll leave that line. I'll just put a space in there. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to change this commands, and we're going to actually, we are going to, let's make a function called move, and it's going to take a color and a count. Okay, and this is going to do um, a for loop. For will create i is equal to one, all the way up to a count. So if a count is ten, if we said move up ten times, then it's going to come in here and it's going to go. Okay, start from one and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it'll stop at ten. Do, and then what we're going to what we're going to do here is we're going to say um, redstone dot set bundled output. We're going to hard code something in here for a second. This is horrible. But what are you going to do? A color. Okay. And then we're that's so what that's going to do is that's going to turn it on, turn the color on. Then we're going to sleep. Four, eh, point two doesn't matter. RS set bundled output right side, and then zero, and then we will sleep again. And this time we're going to sleep for one full second. So remember the point. Um, actually, let's sleep for one point four. So we have slept for a total of 1.6 seconds. Now the reason we're doing that is because if you remember that 0.8 seconds is actually the right amount of time, but this thing is moving two motors. So the 0.8 seconds doesn't really come into play here, unfortunately. You're not going to move. The only time it, you're not going to move at the optimal speed. The only time you will be able to is when you're moving your drill bit down into the earth. You'll be able to move that at top speed. But what we're going to do is, okay, so the function move is going to take a color. That's going to be um, a color of the cable. We'll get into that in a second. And it's going to take a number of times, okay? And then it's going to loop through, and, and for each time that it's supposed to, it's basically going to pulse that engine. And it's going to set it, the color to on. It's going to send a signal out to that um, color of cable. It's going to let it sit there for 0.2 of a second, and then it's going to turn it off and then wait 1.4 seconds to kind of like reset the whole system. So the engine has time to get back into place, and we're not moving engines before the other ones come back into place. And let me just go, let me show you why. Um, we're bundled cables right now. It's coming out of the um, right side of our computer. And uh, so that's why I had it do set bundled output on the right. And then these are the colors. Um, the colors API. I'll show you how to use that in a second. It's actually quite convenient, but <clears throat> it gives you. Oh, you know what? Did I wire all these engines in? I'm lagging like crazy. Let's get rid of that stupid rain. So we have blue, brown, and we don't even have all these engines wired in. So let's take a second and. The only colors we need here are black, green, and red. We already have the other ones. We just need to add the other three directions. So I pretty much always get this wrong. Um, this is going to move the whole ship that way. So I think this is technically, let me get white. I think this is technically forward. You can change these. I, I <laughs> Forward, that's not actually what it's called. I always get these wrong. Um, we're going to put white here, we're going to put black here, because this will be our back. Then this is going to be pushing this motor this way, and then that motor is going to move all of the frames this way. No, move them all this way. So technically that is moving right. We need to green light starboard right. And then port red wine. That's from boating class. Okay. So those are our colors. Now what we're going to do, let's go back and edit this guy. And we're going to change this to 
Ah, you know what we can't. Let's just leave it commands. It's not really going to make sense for what we're doing. Um, but what we're going to do is, let's see. Um, we're going to say, we're not even going to put any error checking. This is going to be kind of bad. You're just going to act actually have to type it correctly. Um, we will say that we're going to move commands direction and then count so what this is doing is a direction they're gonna type it in so you're gonna type in say you type in up okay then you're gonna go and it's gonna come down to here and it's gonna say okay find me the command at index whatever the direction value is well the direction value is this string up you just typed it in so it's gonna come and it's gonna look in here and they oh look Here's the string up. This is what I'm going to return. So now what we're going to do, um, and then it will return that value. So it would return the word up to this function call, which doesn't do us any good. We need it to actually be a color. So we're going to do colors.blue for up, blue towards the sky, colors.brown for towards the ground. Left is going to be colors.red green right yeah right it's gonna be colors dot green forward there's always a white light on the front of the boat colors dot white and backward colors dot black okay and now what this is gonna do is the colors API will return a number and it's a really weird way of doing it. It actually is kind of clever, but it only supports 16 things. But anyway, all you need to know is if you type colors.blue, it returns a number that um, the RS set bundled output recognizes as a color. So if we do up is colors.blue, and then somebody comes in, enter a direction, they say a direction, I want to go up. How many times? I want to go 10 times, I want to go up. So it's going to say, okay, move. Then it's going to go in here. It's going to say find up, okay, colors.blue is the value for up, so move colors.blue 10 times, right? So then it's going to come into here and it's going to say move, okay, color. Set bundled output, okay, let's ping the blue wire, then stop, then turn it off, and then come back up here again, ping the blue wire again, let it sit for a second, okay, turn it off, come back up here, blue, sleep, come back, turn it off, okay? And we can actually, I'll put a lamp, and let me see, um, trying to think. well, what if we said, let's get a lamp, so you can see this, we got to wrap this up, let's get a white lamp, and we're just going to, we're just going to, we're going to cheat, give me some jacketed cable. Jacketed, oh my goodness. Jacketed bundled cable. We'll just get this hideous yellow one for a second. I'm going to destroy that because we don't actually want to trigger this. And I'm just I'm just doing this to show you how this works. If we put a light there, and if we wanted to actually see what it looked like. Let's go back into our code. Let's make sure everything looks right, which I think it does. We'll come back into here. We'll reboot because we got to pick up our code changes. We're going to say we want to move um, forward 20 times. See? It's pinging now. And it's not going too fast. You can see the little redstone signal change in there. You can see this going. Um, it's not going too fast because you remember the, the motor is going to have to... Um, the motor is going to move this way and that's one pulse of this guy then this guy has to get pulsed and he has to move back so we have to wait kind of a long time uh, for that to happen so and then this thing's gonna this thing's gonna keep going so let's hit control T we'll terminate it actually we'll just reboot we will get rid of this and let's do something for real let's say we're gonna go up and we want to move up two times boom boom oh yeah folks oh yeah there you go you have your basic um, 
control setup and now this thing is going to wait for us again we can say let's move left let's see if we actually got this right let's move left once and that is definitely right so we need to change <laughs> I know I can get it wrong we need to change these which means I probably got forward and backwards wrong as well forward one yeah that's backwards We'll say back back to the future and all right so we can move up down we can move left right forward and backward and there we go and then what we're gonna do next let me just move this guy forward and get him out of there forward four times one two three Four. Good, our timings are correct. It's not a very fast machine, as you can see. Um, but what we're going to do next time is we are going to pimp this thing out a little bit more. We're going to be looking at some touchscreen stuff, and we'll try and frame this out a little bit better. But that's your basic computer craft tutorial. We're also going to look at paste bin and stuff next time because we're going to get a handmade by yours truly monitor API that lets you. Um, really easily add computer monitors and have them um, support touchscreen with buttons and and the whole nine yards so we'll look at that next time this we have got to wrap up thank you for watching hopefully at this point you should be able to have an airship that you can move around you can run this bundled cable if you if you wanted to you could uh, and we'll probably we'll probably do this next time but you could um, build a little bit of a platform out here and I just grab doop doop right there. Doop doop doop. Um you could run some of your bundled cable up the side here and have it come and do this. See this is why actually let's just do this really quick. If you'll just bear with me for one more second, we're gonna take and we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I have the disc in my hand, I'm gonna destroy these two things, I'm gonna add some bundled cable and let's get this we're actually going the wrong way but that's fine for now I'll show you why why we did do things the way we do I'm gonna come down here with this you're gonna connect them to that come here put your advanced computer put your disk drive which for some reason always requires a panel put your disk in there we just move the whole setup and boom look at that you cannot ask for anything sweeter than that it automatically tried to boot itself up it called the startup command in the disk that we just put in there it's already asking us for a direction and if we say up and say one it is going to move up one time okay so next time we're going to look at how to do computer um, touchscreen monitors and all that stuff um, I will put this code on pastebin this version one kind of bootleg code on pastebin and just remember to put it on a drive and call it startup and if you don't know how to do pastebin commands in the turtle um, actually let me just show you really quick you're gonna do pastebin get and then the pastebin ID which I'll give you pastebin ID and then the name of a the name of a, um, a startup command or the name of the program that you want to run so you're gonna say disk startup and when you hit enter it's gonna go to pastebin.com it's gonna get whatever pastebin is by this pastebin ID you're gonna have to change that to what I tell you and then it's gonna copy it save it down and it's gonna put it on disk and call it startup and that's gonna be the way that you can get this code running on this floppy disk that we just did today okay guys sorry this took a little bit long thanks for watching hopefully this was helpful we're going to get a little more in depth in the next ones but at this point you really should have a the frame of a, a frame ship that you can um, you can start adding you can start adding blocks and kind of framing it out a little bit you should be able to move around completely independently um, if you want to get this thing off the ground I guess literally quickly just put a bunch of panels down like this and then put some red power solar panels next to this battery here and you'll be all set we're also going to look at in the future episodes we're going to set this thing up to um, remotely get power and everything so 
make sure to check back, stay poised, keep the ideas coming. Maybe there's something that um, that we can kind of work into the design here. Serenity is just too stinking long, which is really sad because it would really be awesome. But 74 blocks, I think we're going to run out. Again, if you actually build Serenity, let us know. Send us some pictures. Um, send us a video or send us the link to your server, and we'll come on and take a video and put it on YouTube um, as a video response to this. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time, and stay poised.